Welcome to our Missionary Stories for Children, but we know that the adults love these stories the same as children. We'll always be a child of God as long as we're able to teach boys and girls. And today we're talking about salvation as we did last week. The wordless book shows us that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. So in the book of Ephesians, we know that God's word says in chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. You see, God gave us salvation. Jesus Christ gave us his blood. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, Ephesians 1, 7. And then we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And since we have God the Father hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings, salvation is secured by the blood and by the seal of the Holy Spirit. And that is in verse 13 of chapter 1 of Ephesians in whom ye also trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, you have to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You see, the revelation of the body of Christ for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, and Christ is the head. And the fullness of that body, we see the rich privileges and heavenly destiny in the book of Ephesians. Because the work of redemption is more glorious than creation. So we see this in these lessons. And we pray that every person that is listening will accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and know that you have assurance of salvation. And I want to give you one Bible verse that will show you this truth. 1 John. And when we see 1 John 5, we see this. Listen to this. This is another assurance. And this is the record in chapter 5 of 1 John, and this is verse 11. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And you as a child of God today, must be able to tell others how to be born again. And then we go back to John chapter 3, and this is verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So you see why every person that's listening, we're praying for 100 fold. So you can know these truths and tell others about God's great love for us, that you can have eternal life today. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we truly praise Thee for this gift of eternal life. We pray for every person that's listening today, that they may know the joy 
and the peace that passes all understanding when we are brought out of darkness into life. That we can know today we're brought out of the power of Satan unto the kingdom of thy dear Son. We thank thee for saving every person. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now today we're going to be talking about Donna's missionary offering. This is a little girl that had accepted Christ as Savior. So she had in her Sunday school class, they were taking up an offering for missionaries that were on the field. So when she came home from Sunday school, she told her mother that she wanted to make extra money so she would be able to give something for the offering so her class would have the biggest offering. Whoever, what the class that had the most money would get a big banner. So as she was setting the table, helping her mother, after they came home from Sunday school and church, her mother said, well, we have some pop bottles. You can take those tomorrow and then your 50 cents allowance. Now remember, these are stories of long time ago. And so, oh, she was so happy that she could take these to her store so she could get extra money. So the next, on Monday, she had something planned every day where she would be able to get extra money for her missionary offerings. So she got the pop bottles, she went in, and when she went in to the store, she came out and she had 25 cents. And she saw this little boy sitting there crying and looking down into this place where he had dropped his quarter. And he, she said, what's the matter, little boy? He said, oh, this is all the money my mother had. And I dropped it down in there and we cannot get it. And we, this is all the money we had until Friday. So she got a hold of his hand, went in, and she bought the loaf of bread that she got with her pop bottles and gave him the loaf of bread. He said, for me? She said, yes, this is for you. Just to see the smile on his face was enough to show her that she did the right thing. So Tuesday, she was going to be able to help her neighbor next door. Her neighbor had heard that she wanted something for her missionary's offerings, but her mother's, her grandmother was sick so she had to take care of her little boy, her little baby brother, two years old. And Mrs. Kent said, well, tomorrow I will have something for you to do, a some chore that you can come over and work for me. This is so nice of you to be able to help your mother and that she can go help her grandmother. And the best thing is that you want to give this money for someone else. So. Sad day on Wednesday, Mrs. Kent was called out to go to someplace else and didn't have any work for her. So she's sitting here trying to figure out how can I get extra money to give for my missionary's offering. All of a sudden, she saw a little dog running through Mrs. Kent's lawn digging in her flowers. So she ran and she went, and when she went through, she ran through the dog out of the yard, she saw someone in the backyard. And he was sitting there and he said, what are you doing? You're trespassing. She said, what am I doing? She said, I live next door. And the dog was tearing up Mrs. Kent's flower bed and I ran him out. She said, you're the one that is trespassing. What are you doing here? He said, I came to mow the lawn for Mrs. Kent. And she said, if I did a good job, I could have the job all summer. But he said, after I started, I turned my ankle and hurt my ankle and I can't stand up on it to help to finish the mowing. Oh, she said, I will 
mow the lawn for you. He, she said, I am Donna. And he said, you are just a girl. So his name was Todd Evans. She said, I help mow the lawn at our house and I can help you. And he said, I, can't, I don't have any money to pay you. She said, I don't want any money. This is my work for Jesus and I don't take pay for that. So he said, I will help you start the mower. He started it for her. She mowed the lawn until she had to go in for dinner. She didn't get finished and she said, I will be back tomorrow and help you finish the lawn. And he said, what makes you so different? I've never seen anyone like you before. She said, well, I wanted to earn some money for my missionary at church. And she said, everything that's happened, I haven't been able to do anything to make extra money. But I'm still trusting the Lord that I will be able to get something extra so I can give it to someone else. And the next day, came back, came back. He was able to help her and he wanted to pay her. She said, I don't take any money for what I do to help people that I am serving the Lord. So he said, well, he said, if I can do something for you sometime, let me know. She said, you can do something for me. You can go to ch Sunday school with me on Sunday and church. He said, that's a deal. So here it is. This is Thursday. She hasn't made any extra money. And then that night she prayed, Lord, I really wanted to get $5 extra besides my 50 cents allowance. But now I will take two or I may take $1. Whatever you want to give me, Lord, I want to thank you. This has been a week that my plans have been interrupted, but I still have Friday and I still have Saturday all day. So Friday came, still she didn't have anything at all to do on Friday. So she prayed and asked the Lord to help her to have something on Saturday to do for the Lord. Well, on Friday, her mother and father said, Uncle Chuck is coming on Saturday. Oh, she said, now I won't have any time to work for my missionary's offering. So they came, they sat down, her dad gave her her money. She got a quarter, two dimes and a nickel. And she had a real sad look. Chuck said, what, why such a long look? He said, that's a lot of money for a little girl like you. He said, let me see that money. He collected money, old money. And he found, he said, this is a dime that I have been looking for. Oh, he said, I will give you $50, $50. Did you hear that? Mom, did you hear that, Dad? And it's all yours. Now he said, what are you going to do with that much money? She said, I'm going to give it to the missionary. She said, I told the Lord if he gave me anything extra this week, I would give it to him. Sure enough, she gave it all to the missionary. And Chuck said, you told me about you being different and you've tried to tell me and I wouldn't listen. But now I know that you are different and I'm going to church with you on Sunday. And that is just what he did and just what Todd did because they saw in her her faithfulness to her Lord. Do you know anyone that is that faithful? What about you? What about each of us? What are we doing to help others? Well, this is another story and it's Jimmy the Atheist. Jimmy the Atheist lived in this town. This is a true story. 
And this little boy lived with his aunt. Now his aunt didn't truly want to take care of him. But anyway, she put him up and helped him as long as she could. But this was a house that had been made of wood. The house caught on fire. She couldn't get out of the house and the firemen didn't have trucks, didn't have ladders. So this little boy was screaming for help. He was on the second floor. And this man that was an atheist, Jimmy the atheist, climbed up and got this little boy out and saved him. And when he did, the people were amazed that Jimmy the atheist would climb up this drain and save this little boy. After this, this boy didn't have anyone to care for him at all. But Jimmy loved this little boy. So the pastor took the little boy in and when the time came for someone to take him into their homes, the Marcias came and they wanted him because they didn't have any children. And they were Christians and they would tell him about the Lord Jesus Christ. But Jimmy the atheist heard about it. And when he came, he, did, he saw the kind face of Mrs. Marsh, but there was something about Jimmy the Atheist. When he came, he said, I want to take him home with me because these hands were wounded for him to save his life. So naturally this little boy loved him because he did save his life. So he took him home they became wonderful. He called him dad. They went everywhere together. They fished. They did all kinds of wonderful things. So one day there was a um, museum where they had all kinds of pictures of different things for them to go look at. And when they came to these pictures, there were a lot of pictures about someone hanging on a cross. And he asked him, Daddy, why is that man hanging on a cross? Why does he have nail prints in his hands? And why does he have nail prints in his feet? Why is he hanging on the cross? And he didn't want to tell him, but he had heard when he was a little boy the truth about Jesus Christ dying on the cross. And he told him the story and he said, as they were going home, he said, please tell me this story again. Daddy, I want to know why he had to die on that cross. He said, well, he had to die to save people from going to a place they call hell in the Bible. When he got home, he had to tell him again because heaven is a place where Christ is and he is there today preparing a place for everyone that receives him as Savior. And he died so that you would not have to die. And he knew this Bible verse, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Well, when he heard this about this man, he said to him, you know, before he went to bed that night, he said, that reminds me of you, Daddy, because your hands were wounded to save me. And now Jesus has died so that he can save me and save you. Well, this touched Jimmy the atheist. And that night, he called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to save him. And so, did his little son, that he saw a need to go up on this drain pipe 
and save that little boy. You see, every person in the world needs Christ. And this little boy saw a love that was beyond anything he could ever dream of. Now, this is a story, a true story, about Goldie, Goldie's Choice. Now, Goldie's Choice, they had chickens. This lady lived on a farm, and they had chickens everywhere. So Mrs. Morse and Mr. Morse loved the chickens, but they had one called Goldie. And Goldie was their pet that followed them every place. So she missed Goldie for a few days and didn't know what had happened to Goldie. So she went looking for her and she found her that she had laid eggs and she had a nest and she was hatching eggs and she put more eggs in under there so she could have more baby chicks. So Mr. Morse then decided that these baby chicks would need a chicken coop. So he made a chicken coop. After the chicks were born, they, she loved the chicken coop and she watched her little chicks she watched everything they did. So one day there was coming a really bad storm. So she tried to get Goldie to go into the chicken coop and she would run away when she got right to the door where the chicks, the coop was, she spread her wings out and wouldn't go in the chicken coop. So. Mrs. Morse picked up three of the little baby chicks, put them in the chicken coop, and put a brick against the door to keep them from coming out. The next morning, she tried to figure out what had happened to Goldie, that she wouldn't go in that chicken coop. And she saw when she moved the brick, she saw the reason there was a snake inside and God protects his animals. He gives them an instinct, what will hurt them and what will hurt their baby chicks. She felt so bad that here she was trying to get this hen to go into a place where she would have eaten all, this snake would have eaten all of her baby chicks. But she was wise and wouldn't go in. Then she called Mr. Morse and told him to bring a hoe and kill the snake. She went and found Goldie. Goldie had protected her little baby chicks from the snake and all of the baby chicks that she took with her were safe. The other three died. This is what happens. This is what happens to your friends. Your friends do not love you unless they want you to do what is right. You see, she thought she was doing the best for Goldie, but she made a mistake. And you know, that's what happens. Children, many times, will get into things that will destroy their lives and lead them to an eternal hell. That's why you must know your enemies that want you to do wrong is the ones that hate you with cruel hatred. And you must know this, and you must understand it, and do what God's Word says, and not follow what man says. We know that Mrs. Morse wouldn't have done anything to hurt Goldie or the little chickens. But you see, she made a mistake by not looking into the coop to see why Goldie wouldn't go in. Now, this is a real true story about T.T., from Nigeria. There was a missionary came to their village and her father and mother told her not to go to this village, got to go to school. But she wanted to learn to read and write so much. But her father said, if you go 
and learned to read and write with the papers and pencils. She said, when, he said, when you get married and have children, they will be pencils and paper. But she had to go to find out. She went to school. The teacher was the kindest person she had ever met. She taught her how to hold her pencil and she was learning to read from the Bible. They didn't have any books in her language that she could read. So she went to school every day and learned and she loved this wonderful teacher. She had taught her about the Creator, that God created everything. And He created us and every one of us, we are all different. But God loves us all the same. So she saw that she must accept this gift of someone that loved her so much. Because the God that they had served, they feared this God. Because this God, everything bad that happened, they said it was this God that gave them the diseases that they would have, or anything that went wrong, they blamed their God. And she knew that she didn't want this kind of God. So she accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. One day her dad said to her and her mother wanted her to do something that was very, very bad. And she said, I cannot do that. I'm a child of God now because I don't believe in the God that we serve and the God that we worship. He beat her with a rope and put her in the goat house. Her sister spit on her, her brothers wouldn't talk to her, and her friends gave her up. One day she ran away to her teacher, and her teacher told her that she must go back. She was counting the cost. Is it worth it for everybody to turn against me? Her teacher said, go back. It is worth it. She came back and she began to sing the songs that the teacher had told her. The whole village came to hear her songs. And she was obedient. And her mom, even when she was almost blind, her sisters and her dad all came to the little church and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. She told everyone in the village. They called her the little girl that was in the goat house with all of her beatings and everything that happened, she wanted to serve the God that loved her enough to die for her. And God protected her and her whole family was saved. What about you? Is there someone that you can tell about this great love that God has for them? Do so today. Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue.